When we calculate confidence intervals, and we use here the example uh, of a confidence interval for a population mean, an unknown population mean, the general sort of structure of this confidence interval is that we take the sample estimate for that population mean, which would be our sample mean, and then we calculate plus minus something. That something consists of two, two aspects. Firstly, the standard error of x bar. So the standard error of our uh, sample estimate that it tells us how precisely is our estimate, our, our unknown population estimated. And then we have a, a value that depends on how certain we want to be or what the confidence level is going to be. And that comes from some distribution. Okay, let's call it call let's call that this. Now the standard error that is either sigma over square root n, n being the sample size, or s over square root n, depending on whether we know how whether we know the variance of our population variable. Okay, whether we know whether x has a variance, a known variance or not. If we have if it's a known variance, then we use this. If it's an unknown variance or standard deviation, then we use the sample estimate for that sum standard deviation s. Now the distribution here, that value here, that typically comes when we're talking about uh, confidence intervals for population mean, that comes from a t distribution. And then we use sort of the alpha over half value, or it comes from standard normal distribution, in which case we also use the alpha over half, uh, where the alpha comes from the confidence level. So the question is, what, what do we use? Okay, so firstly, we already said, if we know this value here, then we're using that uh, sigma. So let's first uh, let's first deal with that case. Let's do let's call that the green case. Okay, known known sigma. So then the question is, where do we get this value, this distributional value from? And if we are using the sigma, it will always be, if possible, the the normal distribution. So let's say sigma known. So where does that value come from? Okay, that depends on the distribution of our standardized sample mean. Okay, that would be x bar minus mu over sigma over square root n. So how is this distributed? This will determine where we get that value from here. And we have to differentiate four cases. In the end, we will end up with eight cases. Okay, but here we have um, four. We're looking at sample sizes, small or large. And then we need to figure out how the x is distributed. Okay, is that a normal distribution or not? A normal distribution. So if we are dealing with the case, so we know that x is normally distributed and we know the sigma, then that will be a normal distribution. So then we are using the set value for uh, if alpha is 5%, then that would be 1.96, the value which you know. And for large n that doesn't change, that is still a normal distribution. What if we are not sure that x is normally distributed, but we know the variance. Well, for small n, turns out we don't really know how this is distributed. So that means we can't actually calculate confidence intervals in that case. What about large n, whatever large means, I say something in a moment, well, then that standardized sample mean will be normally distributed due to the central limit theorem. 
And that means, and this now gives us the hint, what does large mean? Basically, large means large enough such that we can invoke the central limit theorem. That could be values as small as 20 or 30. But if your distribution is very skewed, you may need larger sample sizes for this to work. So there isn't one fixed value of n that works here. OK, so here we have four cases. In three of these cases, we can calculate a confidence interval. And when we calculate the confidence interval, we would get this value here from the standard normal distribution. What if we do not know the variance of our population variable. So let's talk about this case here. Right. So we're talking about sigma being unknown. So now we are thinking of our standardization. A standardized sample mean is going to be x bar minus mu divided by s over square root n. So how is that distributed? This will now determine where we get that value from. And it turns out it could either be the t-distribution or it could be the standard normal distribution. Now, so that means this much more common case, meaning the case where we don't know the population variance and we have to estimate it with the sample, becomes a little bit more complicated. We're looking at the same type of table. So we're looking at the sample. Is it small or large? And what is the distribution of x? Is it normal or not normal? So let's start with this first case again. Normal, x being normal, but we don't know the variance and n is small. Well, then the distribution of this guy here is going to be a t distribution with n minus 1 decrease of freedom. That means in this case, our value here, when we calculate the confidence interval comes from the t-distribution. If n is large, and we still know that x is normally distributed, I got that the wrong way around. So here we are thinking of how is x distributed. Well, it's still a t-distribution, but if we have large n, we know that the t-distribution is very well approximated by the normal distribution. So if you have sample sizes, anything like above 100 or 150, then we'll typically use the normal distribution because that's very close to the t-distribution. But formally, you're still using the t-distribution here. What about if our x is not normally distributed? and we don't know the variance, and we have small sample size, well, again, we don't really know how this guy here is distributed, and that means you can't really calculate a confidence interval in that case. And what if our sample size is large? Well, then again, we can approximate this with a normal distribution, again, due to a central limit theorem. That means in that case, this value here will come from the standard normal distribution. So as you can see, there are eight cases altogether. Two cases, let me highlight them. Uh, yeah, let me highlight them here. Two cases where we can't actually calculate the confidence interval. And that's when we have non-normal distributions of x and small sample sizes irrespective of whether you know the variance or not. You can't really then calculate a confidence interval. Then we're having, let's call them the green cases, an awful lot of cases where we can use the standard normal distribution as our value from, or we take that value from the standard normal distribution here. Okay, in fact, five of the eight cases. And then there is one extra case so that's for all large samples and for the case where x is normally distributed and we know the variance of x. And then we have one case where we use the t-distribution and that is when we have small sample, we do not know the population variance and our population distribution is known or assumed to be normal.